to another episode of Global Business. I am your host, Dr. Neva. Today, I have the privilege of interviewing the Managing Director of AquaShield, Mr. Nasser Solowa. How are you? I am very well, Doctor. How about yourself? I am excellent. Thank you so much for your it looks time. Like, it looks I like know it. That. So I, I just want to say thank you so much, you know, for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this interview. Well, I want to thank you for taking the opportunity or giving me the opportunity to do the interview. I you know in Nigeria alone, there are millions of uh, businesses for you to even pick mine to do the interview. It's really a humbling for me. So thank you for the opportunity or recognizing that a company like ours exists. So I cannot thank you enough for that. Thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure. But yes, there are more than one company, but none as yours. Yours is unique. So tell us about Aqua Shield. What exactly is it? What do you do? Okay, Aqua Shield is a company that provides primarily uh, security, offshore security support service for the oil and gas because in Nigeria we have an oil and gas or it is an oil and gas. So uh, Aqua Shield primarily is one of the few companies that provide security support services for the oil and gas. If you can see the name Aqua, which means water, Shield of course means protection. So. The name is a collaboration of protection and water. So it is a uh, marine protection support services. And uh, the company is, is born out of necessity. Years of 2009 and two, uh, 2007 and 2008, there is a type of killings, abductions, uh, piracy in the Gulf of Guinea region to the extent that oil and oil companies are no known operate because they cannot so uh, but for me Aqua Shield is a personal uh, decision after a friend was killed during one of the raids by pirates or military. I felt that there is a need to have some kind of association between the government agencies because at that time the government agencies do not have platforms to fight the minas of that time. They have the men but they don't have the vessels. What they need to operate in the waters of Nigeria. So we thought of how can we give to them this platform so that they can intervene in saving people's lives. So that it was purely out of concern for IMM Arena. I've worked at sea for over 15 years and I know the risk uh, people have. So in order to protect myself and my brother, that is the for the essence of having a passion. Wow, thank you for that, sharing that. Um, you know what, I quite intrigued that you look at what was necessary, what was the need, and was able to turn it into a viable business. So what is your vision? Has it changed from you started? No, our vision has not started, it yeah, have not changed. However, it um, it expanded, so it's, it has not changed but there is an but uh, as the security challenges are becoming overcome so one have to start looking for alternative uh, things to do because uh, now you have collectively bring people to yourself or to a company to become partners so if uh, what you are providing the services you are providing is no more needed then what do you do are you going to send them back home because your vision was to provide security and there is no need for security you already collectively bring people together to unite and do something so yes there is an, an expansion that apart from just doing the security protection then now there is the need to for the support service to the oil and gas industry as well as uh, try to see if you can go into the private sector of providing marine transport uh, transportation within the country as well as beyond the country 
You know what, one of the things that I do is train and I was looking at your core values and it bear it with an extra eye and I smiled when I saw that. So, you know, why that extra eye and what is your core value? Because in every company, they really need to know their core value for them to be in existence as to move from point A to point B. So what's the extra eye? For the, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, the extra eye, because uh, apart from the integrity, you need to be innovative. You you have integrity, but then what about the innovation? You cannot be uh, in 21st century and be acting with the, 20, uh, of the 19th or 18th century equipment. So you have to be innovative. You have to move with the, the uh, current time for instance in the ad before the advent of coronavirus nobody knew about zoom meetings. today zoom meetings have become part of our life we can't say we we are we are not going to adopt to these things and we have to be creative as i said when we started we started with the vision of providing spirit but we have to be innovative but okay so our core values the spirit with a double r so the s may start for the safety we need to be sure our people are safe the uh, offshore or maritime is the only only field in which you productively people are see you have to be a doctor you have to be a man you have to be a cook you have to, every trait you have to know how to fight fire you every trait you can have at home home where thousands of people can provide you that service once you leave the show you have to know how to do all those things on your own so and if you can do it safely then the whole purpose of you being at sea is defeated so Safety is one of the key values. Professionalism. We want to appear professional. We want to be professional. So whenever we are talking, whenever our dealing is, we do it uh, professionally. And of course, um, and then the respect. We want to respect each other. We respect ourselves. We respect our partners. We respect our uh, stakeholders. So it is not like uh, whereby a business is one and people in that business are counted as numbers. We don't see anybody party in our business as a number, but they are human beings who we feel we have a mutual respect for each other. Then of course the uh, I, which of course we say is integrity, we want to go with integrity. Whatever we do, it has to, we have to have an integrity. The second I, which of course what intrigued you was being innovative, we have to go with innovations. And then our T is the teamwork, which is a collective effort. You can fight uh, initially, you cannot fight piracy or any of those things without having a teamwork. It is a collective. And E, of course, is the excellence. We want to excel. Whatever we, we are doing, we want to excel. We just don't want to be amongst we want to be above the amount. So I, I don't know if that explains a lot. Yes, it explains a lot. And thank you for really breaking it down. You know, as business owners need to know how to put this together. So my next question to you, how many employees did you see the company start with? And how many employees do you have now? Was that affected um, because of the virus? Okay, yeah. Uh, well, when Aquashield started in 27, 20, uh, 2007, there were about five or no, about three employees. Uh, currently, Aquashield have over 300. That's yes. a large amount. Yeah, it is a large amount. So uh, yes, the the pandemic, the Corona pandemic, did affect uh, the number of employees we do have because we have to lay off some due to, of course, the the oil the oil dropped at one time to below zero. So um, almost all excuse me, all international oil companies have to lay off their support services and of course you cannot retain seafarers people working on a ship for long because ship is 
you have to constantly maintain it, feed the crew, give them allowances. So it's a, like a whole bowl of soup that if you maintain it, you are going to the whole thing will just be sucked. So yes, the air, the corona really did affect us and we laid off some of our stuff. Thank you for being honest. And so many different companies have had to come up with a strategic plan and make changes in order for them to keep running. And, you know, I'm sure that once things get back together, you know, things will be aligned again. Now, Arthur, have you faced any challenges beyond the pandemic? Have you faced any challenges with the company? Yeah, yeah. in the past, in, I think in 20, uh, 15, 2014, 2015 to 2016, there was another oil block in those times when oil dropped about twenty you know, thirty dollars to a barrel when it was hundred dollars. So that one also affected uh, all the oil and gas industry. So but uh, what we did is stay low, stay focused, we continue to consistently uh, uh, prep ourselves, getting ourselves ready for when the market was ready to get back and when it dropped back we came out of our hibernation and start. So also it's the same thing. Whenever you have a challenge, it, it is two ways. Can I fight it? If it is something you fight, you bulldoze yourself through. If it is something you can't fight, you lay low until the storm pass and then you, you pick up your pieces and move on. So yes, of course we have we've had some challenge in the past. We are having one now. So we all look each challenge, you look at it and then come up with a solution that is applicable to that challenge at that time. All right. Now I don't want you to name the competitor, but um, what, who are your competitors? Like what what are they doing? Who you know in a sense. So I don't want the name, but what type of business would be your competitor, your competition? Okay. Um in the as I told you, in the oil, uh, in the maritime security alone, um, when we started, well, when the menace of the uh, the piracy and militancy was on, um, there were just about maybe five or six companies in that. However, as um, the business grew, people saw that because that time the reason was purely to save people. But when people see that, oh, it is a it is a good business, so like everybody jump into it. So yes, uh, before the competition was just about maybe you can say five or so, but right now there is over three hundred registered maritime security companies in it. So it's a huge, huge challenge, but. As we say, we, we focus on our core values. Those are the things that are keeping us relevant and we, we still feel we will remain relevant. Yes, there are Definitely. Go back to the core values, why you get started, why you're in it. And of course, getting recognized and letting people know that you are the best and you have your credentials behind you. You exactly. just didn't start as a whim, right? As, exactly, exactly. You didn't start because if there is money in it or there is, it is somebody who had stolen some government money and is looking for a way to hide it. So it just passed. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Okay. So let me ask you how many, if you at liberty to say, how many approximate vessels do you have in the uh, country? Currently, com the company has about uh, 12 vessels. Uh, of course, uh, some of them are bank finance vessels. So it is co-ownership between the company and the bank until the, uh, the company finishes the Yes, that's about 12 of them. With the vision to expand as the pandemic finish and we go back to business right? so hopefully that we can expand. Our vision is to have nothing less than maybe about a thousand uh, vessels providing support not only to oil and gas as we said we are trying to transform into giving uh, transportation, maritime transportation so from ferries to uh, 
liners. So, so those are all the visions that we are hoping to work into. So, so yeah, we, 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 our vision is not limited just to maritime. It is evolving or expanding. So, you know, here's a question that I've been asked quite a few times. You know, what is the ease of doing business in Nigeria? Don't sugarcoat. Let us know because there are many people on this side want to step, you know, into Nigeria and do things. So what is what are the ease and maybe the difficulty? The, the ease could be a disadvantage. Um, to be honest, the uh, the ease is there is a lot of uh, taxes that uh, are less than other countries. So people here pay less taxes. Uh, so it is an ease. Um, but the challenge is the integrity and the system that you have to you pay to the government maybe 10%, you end up paying an individual whose job is just to sign a paper for you. If you don't do something, then your, your, your job is just a paper that can qualify you. It is his job. It's not that you are not qualified for it. But so some of the challenge we are having are those things. But uh, it looks like things are improving. Um, so we hope that they will keep on improving. Uh, people are being held accountable to their offices. And if that uh, is held fully, I think yeah, Nigeria will be one of the best place to do business. Uh, first, the population is there. It is a country that has over 200 million. So there is a lot to do. And it is a country that produces practically 5 to 10 percent of its needs. So wherever you come to do business in Nigeria, you, you won't get it wrong unless you don't do the right thing, unless you do a bad job. But if you are going to do a good job, you're going to have integrity, you're going to have quality, then you can get it wrong. So for anybody who wants to come to Nigeria, I yes, I think Nigeria is a really, really virgin country in Africa to come to. Thank you. Now my last question before I let you go to your busy day, what is your strategy for success? What's that secret to us? Core values. Just it goes back to our core values. That is our strategy. You give to those core values, then your business will be successful in Nigeria. And we keep to those core values. So anytime we feel we are we are going off, things are not going right. We look, and I promise you, when we look back, we realize we are going off those values. And when we go back to those values, we get back straight to our feet again. So yeah, I think the strategy has been just to quality and the integrity of your, your services. You, you don't say X and then when Y is actually what is happening or you say, Z and then actually what is happening is A. So you say A and when somebody come and check, they find A on the path. So the quality and strat uh, honesty is one of the key uh, things we believe help in our success. So thank you again, MD, for your time. I really appreciate your information and the knowledge that you shared, right? And again, um, thanks again for watching another episode of Global Business. Until next time, bye-bye. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.